So you're piecing together your first gaming PC using both new and used parts to get the best value for money. That's actually a great way to go about it, especially if you're, say, still in school and only have access to Christmas money and the occasional pocket money to fund the project. And so I thought this would be a good time to look back at some of my older GPUs and see if it's actually worth going with a, a used old graphics card instead of going and buying a new one like this RTX 2060. So what cards do I have here? Well, some of them are my original graphics cards that I bought, God, seven years, eight years ago now, um, including an HD 6870, that's actually my very first graphics card I bought. Um, sadly, that one won't actually be appearing in benchmarks as while well, the computer I put it in, which is a Ryzen 3900X, um, detected that there was a HD 6800 series graphics card installed, it didn't actually display anything and so it might be dead, which I'm quite sad about. Now moving up from there is actually my next graphics card, that is the HD 7870. That one is actually a special edition that had a few extra cores than the standard 7870, which made it ever so slightly faster and in terms of trying to go and buy one right now you can only find them used as you would expect being what six or seven generations old and that uh, roughly costs anywhere between 50 and 100 pounds depending on where you are and where you look and obviously when you watch this um, but that's roughly the pricing. Next is an R9 280. This is actually my first review sample graphics card and this one sells for, well, you can't really find them, but if you can, they're about 50 pounds, which makes them incredibly cheap, but also not very power efficient. And uh, generally they were a mid-range card when they launched and they've kind of just declined in status in there. Next is a slightly more modern card, the RX 470. This is an incredible value for money right now. You can pick them up for around about 80 to 90 pounds, generally under 100 uh, when you're looking used, although they are very similar to the RX 570s. Uh, they are ostensibly just a slightly lower clocked version and you can always overclock them afterwards if you fancy. And so this could be a very interesting contender. And lastly, on the AMD side, we have an R9 Fury. Now this graphics core is pretty revolutionary in its design using HBM memory. And while it didn't really take off that much, at least for now anyway, and is a pretty massive power draw of a card. Uh, this one costs anywhere between 150 and 200 pounds right now. Moving to the Nvidia side, I don't have as many older Nvidia cards. Uh, what we're going to be running here is an RTX 2060 for reference as our sort of new card, a 980 Ti. This one's actually the Asus Poseidon model and then I also have a 1050. Now the 2060s, well I'm using an Nvidia Founders Edition here, you can't really buy this specific model but generally speaking a standard 2060 non super costs around about 300 pounds. You then have the 980Ti which can be found for around 200 on the used market and the 1050 which can be found for about 100 on the new market. And a quick note on the 1050, this one is actually a low power edition so it doesn't have a PCIe power connector uh, so it's technically slightly underclocked and not fully representative of a 1050, add a couple of FPS to most of the benchmarks you see. So that is all of the graphics cards, what about the games we'll be testing? I'm using four pretty modern day titles, we have PUBG, Fortnite, Battlefield 5 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. All of them are running on low settings for an even playing field, especially for the older and lower end cards. Of course you can turn up the settings if you're buying a slightly more powerful card like the 980 Ti or the 2060, but to level the playing field were on low and we're at 10 ETP again for a pretty level playing field. With that said, let's take a look at those results. So starting off with Battlefield 5, we have what is a pretty interesting set of results. The 2060 is the clear winner here with the 980Ti and the R9 Fury coming in pretty similar with the Fury just edging out. The 470 is the standout here as it's almost the same, only about what 15 FPS shy of the Fury while being a good bit higher than the rest. And the same actually goes for Call of Duty here, although the 980Ti does have a convincing lead over the Fury here by comparison. The 2060 is still the leader as you would expect and the 1050 and the older AMD cards are both pretty minimal. The same goes for PUBG, it's actually the 980 Ti is a lot closer to the 2060 here, only 11 FPS difference with the Fury being a good bit lower as well and again the 470 being incredibly close to the Fury while we're at it. When it comes to Fortnite this is a very drastic difference, nearly 400 FPS on the 2060 but only two 
244 on the 470, still definitely playable, but a pretty big margin between the two. But what do all of those graphs mean? Well, ostensibly, if you want the best value graphics card you can buy right now, go and buy an RX 470. It is an incredible card, it plays very well in any of the games, it was a smooth gaming experience and while we were playing it low, in some of those titles you were getting well over 100 FPS and so if you're only gaming on a 60Hz monitor then you can turn the settings up until you get to about 60FPS average and then you'll have a very you know quality rich but also smooth gaming experience. Now if you did want to game at slightly higher settings then there are a couple of options. The R9 Fury technically takes the lead here in terms of value for money, but uh, there's a few caveats to that. First of all, it's not a very efficient card. This can draw a maximum of 375 watts, which compare that to the RX 470, which draws a maximum of 150. That's a pretty big difference. It also wasn't stable in my testing for all of the games. Like you saw on the graphs with Fortnite, the, the card actually crashed it. It flashed the loading screen a load and then said that uh, the DirectX version wasn't right or something like that. And So it physically wouldn't play. I tried restarting, I tried updating or, or changing, rolling back drivers, all that sort of stuff, uh, and nothing fixed that. So that may be my card, but it also just generally could be an issue with buying older hardware. The 980 Ti is also a fantastic option there if you want to go with a used market. Now the downside is, like I said, it's still a pretty power inefficient card relatively. This can still draw a maximum of 375 watts and is a tiny bit more expensive than the Fury, although I think generally speaking you get a slight bit more FPS with the, the 90 Ti than the Fury, so take that how you will, but either way, if you want to go used, those are definitely good options. Now, of course, this video is not meant to be a complete guide to every graphics card you can go and buy. Instead, the main takeaway I would, well, take away from the video is that you can go a generation or two back and get an incredible deal in stuff like the RX 470 or even 980 Ti's, where you get really a great amount of performance for the money with the, the cost of slightly higher utility bills, so if you're paying those you might want to fork out for a slightly newer version that's a bit more efficient and of course if you just want the best performance the fact that a 980 Ti is underperforming compared to a 2060 shows that we do come a pretty long way per generation at the cost of well about £100 compared to these two. Now with that said, those are my thoughts and the, the benchmark results. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Which graphics card would you pick up out of this lot? And also, would you pick up a used graphics card or used in the sort of budget mindset? Or would you rather go with whatever is latest and greatest from AMD or Nvidia? Do let me know in those comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, hit that subscribe button with the bell notification icon to be notified of those new videos. You can also check out the links in the description down below. I'll leave a link to a couple of the graphics cards, probably the ones that are available on Amazon right now. Uh, and otherwise, you can check out the rest of the links in the description. If you want to support the channel, there are a load of things that you can check out, like Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links that don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do use them. Or there's stuff like merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or a load of other designs. And stuff like Streamlabs OBS, you're going to start streaming too. Otherwise, if you have any questions, do leave those in the comments down below. Feel free to check out some other videos over there, and we will see you all in the next video.